Hey YouTube, or should I say Pokemon fans, because I know you clicked on this video for a reason. I'm your host Joss, and welcome back to Top 10 Beyond the Screen. Before I get started with all the juicy Pokemon details, make sure you guys are following us on our new social media pages that are linked down below. Also, hang out with me until the end of this video, because I'm going to shout out some Pokemon fan comments from my last video. The new Detective Pikachu movie officially comes out today, but I had the opportunity to go and see the early VIP screening of it last night. The movie was filled with not only Pokemon, but other hidden easter eggs. I'm going to dish out my top 10, so be warned right now that there are spoilers in this video. Let's jump into today's video of Top 10 Detective Pikachu Easter Eggs. Starting off our list at number 10 is Jigglypuff put the patron to sleep. During the diner scene, we see Jigglypuff singing its heart out into a microphone at a table where a man is passed out asleep. The man is clearly out cold, head on the table and everything. Those who aren't too familiar with Pokemon would just assume he's simply tired, especially because he has a coffee cup next to him. So he was probably just trying to get a caffeine boost. However, those who do know the franchise or those who have at least played Smash Brothers know that Jigglypuff singing has the ability to put people to sleep. So really, the man most likely wasn't going to the diner to nap, but once the Pokemon began singing, it was lights out. At number 9 is the binder of training cards in Tim's room. During the scene when Pikachu is searching through Tim's childhood room, he starts turning the pages of one of the binders on a desk. We get a quick glimpse inside the binder, and if you paid close enough attention, you may have caught that the binder was full of Pokemon trading cards. You know, like the binders we all had as a kid and would walk around the school Schoolyard showing it off and making trades with other Pokemon nerds? Well, turns out that Tim himself was one of the many people who spent time and money collecting as many cards as possible and storing them away in a protective binder. Sweatbearer number 8 spot is Berry Juice. The diner was filled with hidden easter eggs and one of them was probably something we all should have caught on to seeing as it was a big neon sign. When Tim is at the bar inside the diner, you can see a neon sign in the background for something called Berry Juice. Only Pokemon fans would catch on that it's a reference to a drink that was introduced in Gen 2. The juice is actually a type of medicine that could restore the Pokemon's HP and heal them. Not sure if the bar has rights to be selling medication, but it was a clever way of adding the reference into the new movie. Coming to the number 7 spot is the speakers are actually Pokemon. It was fun to see Tim and Pikachu wander into the underground Pokemon Fight Club, which also doubled as a pretty bump in nightclub. But one thing you probably didn't realize about the nightclub scene was the speakers. The speakers aren't just big speakers that you would see in a nightclub today, they are actually a Pokemon named Loudred. These Pokemon have big ears that are actually used as loudspeakers, which are coincidentally just what an underground nightclub would need. At number 6 we have Unknown's Alphabet. Unknown is a Pokemon species in the Nintendo and Game Freak's Pokemon franchise. They are different lettered shapes that players would collect throughout the game because you gotta catch them all, right? The Unknowns were so popular that they later appeared in various merchandise and spin-off animated and printed adaptations. You don't actually see the Pokemon in the new movie, but they do make their presence known. Throughout the film, you can see mysterious alphabet letters on different signs and even on one of the shirts that Tim wears. Halfway through our list at number 5 is Trainer Red. At the beginning of the movie, when Tim is traveling to Rhyme City to find out what happened to his father, a promotional video for the city begins to play. In the video, it shows how they would battle with Pokemon. Pokemon. There's one important thing in here that you may not have caught on to and it's the image of Trainer Red at the Coliseum. Red is known as the champion from Pallet Town as well as the living legend for his defeat of Team Rocket in Kanto during his quest. It's a really nice way of highlighting the legendary trainer. Here we are at number 4 with the original theme song. During the scene when Tim and Pikachu go their separate ways after Pikachu believes he had portrayed Tim's father, we see him walking alone down a road and mournfully singing a song. The song he is singing isn't just any song though, it's actually the original Pokemon theme song, also known as Gotta Catch Them All. The original song was written by John Siegler and John Loeffler and performed by Jason Page. The song was the theme song for the first season of the English adaptation 
of the Pokemon animated series. What a fun way to make the Pokemon universe come full circle by adding in something from the very beginning of its time. Alright guys, at number 3 we have Ancient Mew. The scientists are discussing the capture of Mewtwo, they make a reference to the Kanto region. They did not create Mewtwo, someone else did from the Mew fossil, they simply caught the Mewtwo. This mention of Mew is an easter egg referring to the Pokemon 2000 movie. The Ancient Mew card was released as a promotional card when the movie came out. It was given out with the purchase of a ticket for anyone going to see the movie in the United States and some other countries worldwide. The card was so special that it was limited to only the first week of the movie release. At number 2 we have the Pokemon Go reference. Remember the scene when Pikachu wants to ride on Tim's shoulders but he refuses? Well, his refusal makes Pikachu say something about how it will take him 100,000 steps to get anywhere. It's not a common thing for people to bring up the number of steps it takes them to get somewhere, which is why it's referring to something that would justify it. Pikachu was actually making a clever reference to the game Pokemon Go, the game that had the world turn upside down as everyone ran around their town trying to collect a imaginary Pokemon. One cool feature was added to the game though and that was a step tracker. Throughout the players day, the game would sync and track their steps which would help them get some bonuses for the game. So Pikachu complaining about having to walk is actually referencing Pokemon Go. Taking the number 1 spot on our list is the boxing poster. Guys, I have to give credit when credit is due. Our host Johnny from our gaming and nerd channel is actually the genius behind finding this easter egg. The poster can be seen in the same scene that Jigglypuff is singing at the table in the diner. Behind Jigglypuff is an old school poster that showcases two fighting Pokemon. The two Pokemon on the poster look like Machamp and Primeape, which would make sense since they are Pokemon known for their fighting. The poster says fight next week, which actually foreshadowed the underground Pokemon battles that were going on in Rhyme City. It's also important to mention the numbers you see on the poster because many people probably wouldn't have caught on to the hidden meaning, but somehow Johnny did. Primeape was the 8th Pokemon that Ash caught in the Kanto region, making his total number of Pokemon 9. There's a 3 and a 6 on the poster side by side, add that up and you get 9. Coincidence? I think not. Alright guys, there's the top 10 easter eggs I could find. Let me know down in the comments which ones you caught on to and any that I missed. For now, let's check out some comments from my last Pikachu video. Cherry Jan says, I never really watched Pokemon in my childhood, so most of the things related to it are a mystery for me, so thanks for the details. What? Pokemon was a huge part of my childhood. I literally collected those cards like it was my job. I feel really bad. You really missed out. SMWA6773 says, Holy shit, I love Pokemon. You must be freaking out right now because the movie comes out today. Sabrina Elder says, I honestly cannot wait for Detective Pikachu. I am a Pokemon fan and I have been waiting ever since I saw the trailer. Me and my boyfriend are going to see it. He is also a Pokemon fan. I'm so super excited for it and also love your channel so far. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Sabrina. Have a lot of fun at the movie and let me know what you and your boyfriend think. Okay guys, that's all I got for you today. Don't forget to give us a follow on our new social media pages that are linked down below. I'm your host Joss and I'll see you next time.